Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Jakari Jackson. It is June 3rd, 2016, and here's a look at our top stories. Tonight, anti-Trump agitators strike again, this time throwing eggs at women and physically attacking Trump supporters. Meanwhile, the liberal media and San Jose's mayor justify the violence and blame Donald Trump for inciting an angry mob. Then, it's the end of the internet as we know it. Government IDs soon to be a requirement to log in. They are merging the three super states with the 10 sub-regions now, with 10 sub-regions per region directly out of Revelation. And that was just a short look at Crooked Hillary. And one thing I think is encouraging, we're going to talk about a lot of things that are going on around the country, but just in my personal journey, I'm meeting more and more people who want nothing to do with Hillary Clinton. And they're not voting the straight Democratic ticket. They say, we want Bernie or bus, And fine, you know, take that. I'm not a Bernie Sanders supporter, but at least you're not falling for that straight party ticket. And I'll give you that. That's probably <laughs> the nicest things I'm going to say about uh, the Democratic Party today, or at least many of their operatives, their followers, because we've seen all over this country uh, just in the past couple weeks, I was out on the road and the violence at these Trump rallies, but is not being perpetrated by Trump supporters. And they'll show you a video of, you know, some guys shoving somebody out the door and yeah, that's wrong and that shouldn't happen, but they completely ignore these riot type of situations that continue to happen, whether it's in Albuquerque or Anaheim or many other places as well where the violence breaks out. And it wasn't so much violent in Anaheim, but uh, Albuquerque in particular, they were throwing barricades, rocks, lighting stuff on fire and throwing that at the cops. And people continue to say that it's justified. It's justified. And now we have a new string of violence. And this happened in San Jose, where a woman was actually pelted with an egg right in her face. Let's take a look at that clip. Yeah, that's completely ridiculous. But at least the mayor and the leftist media are condemning these actions, right? Well, actually, they're not. Uh, leftist media, also the San Jose mayor, justify the anti-Trump violence in the attack on the woman that you just saw in that video there. And we have a couple tweets here from some journalists. And uh, one of the ladies said, uh, protesters uh, cornering a Trump supporter as they leave. This woman taunted them. They cornered her and threw eggs at her. Now, let's play a scenario. Let's say you go to a, uh, a football game, right? You go to a rival stadium, you have on rival colors, and maybe you taunt the other team a little bit. If they beat up your daughter or your wife or your neighbor or whoever, would you justify that type of violence? Absolutely not. You would say, fine, uh, maybe she was, you know, uh, egging them on a little bit, but it doesn't give them a right to throw an egg in her face. At close range, they terrorize this young lady. Uh, the security was concerned. They didn't want to let her in the building because they didn't want everybody else to rush in. But this is how they continue to justify these attacks. And she also threw out another one, uh, this protester, or excuse me, this uh, tweeter here. She says, protesters also cornered a couple who were not antagonizing them. They closed in on the couple, threw water at them, and spit in their faces. Also, is this appropriate type of behavior, even when you're not antagonized, to go in uh, assault somebody? And people continue to say this is okay. They did it in Albuquerque after the whole... Uh, shindig was over, you know, people throwing rocks, all the things I said earlier. I talked to, to some of the people who were there and I said, is it OK for this to happen? They said, well, we have to do this because of Donald Trump. I said, that makes absolutely no sense. I don't like Mrs. Clinton, but I would not go to a uh, Hillary Clinton event and throw a barricade at the cops. I would not go to a uh, Bernie Sanders event and throw rocks at those demonstrators. That makes absolutely no sense. And this is what the San Jose mayor came to say uh, after he found out about all this stuff. He blamed the violence on Trump. And he said, at some point, Donald Trump needs to take responsibility for the irresponsible, irresponsible behavior of his campaign. And once again, regardless of what this man says, he's not out there throwing the rocks, the barricades, lighting fires, and doing all these other crazy shenanigans that these anti-Trump demonstrators are doing. And as I said earlier, disagreeing with Bernie Sanders does not give you the right to go light a trash can fire or assault a police horse 
or any number of other things to go beat up uh, some Bernie Sanders uh, supporting woman uh, standing at the front door of the convention center it does not give you the right to do that. And they continue to do this. That was just one example. There were so many videos from last night. We can't cover them all, but we will cover this. This is a man who was walking down the street minding his own business, you know, a Trump supporter, and somebody came up from behind and hit him with a sack. <laughs> And the report says that a local ABC News reporter witnessed the event and he said that the police did not break the line to assist the man who was assaulted and they just had to uh, get his statement after he was assaulted uh, by the people out there. And I'm being very careful not to call them protesters because you're not protesting when you assault individuals who are there. That's not protesting at all. And we see uh, many of these uh, demonstrators, for lack of a better term, they even go to Bernie rallies and they say, you're going to let us I'd run up on your stage and shove you around and you're just going to bow down to it. And by and large, he's just going uh, by the whims of these people. They can't even respect Bernie Sanders, even though they're Bernie Sanders supporters. And as I was saying earlier, uh, the left, the media just continue to uh, pat these guys on the back. Oh, it's no big deal. It's Donald Trump's fault. It's everybody's fault except for the people who actually did these things. And now they're actually encouraging people to go out and riot. And like I said, I'm not a Trump supporter, but this man is not telling anybody to go out and riot. But we see these left wing editors doing that. It says, if Donald Trump comes to your town, start a riot. And these are the words of Emmett Rezin. He is a uh, editor at Vox News. He says, if Donald Trump comes to your town, start a riot. And he says, let's be clear. It's never a shame to storm the barricade set up around a fascist. Now, to uh, Mr. Uh, Rezin, I'm not sure how much street cred he has as far as being in riots and stuff. I've actually been in riots, and I was at the Trump event in Albuquerque when these people broke past two barricades, uh, rushing the convention center. Had they got into the convention center, that would have been barricade number three. Uh, what exactly were you planning to do when you got inside these, uh, in, inside these events? You broke past three barricades. If the police used force, I would say it was justified. And then I'm the first person to call out police brutality as I see it. But at that point, they broke through three barricades. What exactly are they supposed to do? I don't think they're going to go in there, run on stage and shake Donald Trump's hand. They have to uh, stop the uh, violent people. And that's what many of them were rushing around on the stage. And it is a shame that when you have these large events, uh, the peaceful people are definitely uh, outshined by the violence. But there is more than a little bit of violence going on at these protests. All the things that I mentioned to you earlier and it's usually the people who haven't been in a riot who think it's the coolest thing ever. Because, I mean, I could cure cancer tomorrow. The only thing people want to talk to me about is Ferguson, Missouri. I understand it's eye-catching and stuff when you watch it on television, but there are many things that could have gone wrong for us personally and it did go wrong for many reporters who are out there. So riots aren't something that I glamorize or anything like that. They're very serious situations. And after you leave those places, the people who live there have to live with the effects of that riot. You know, buildings are still burned down in Ferguson. You know, the uh, situation that had happened out in Baltimore, the people are still living with those ill effects because you have all these people who come from uh, neighboring cities, uh, sometimes even other states. They go up there, they kick up stuff, they go home, they go into the next riot where they're getting paid by George Soros. So keep that in mind, uh, Mr. Vox editor, when you think it's so cool to go out to a riot. Make sure you're on the front line when they start throwing rocks from behind you and they start tear gassing from in front of you. Make sure you're standing on the front line when that happens. And as we continue to talk about these uh, supporters, if people want to blame Donald Trump for some guy wearing a Donald Trump hat and shoving somebody, if that's your argument, you need to blame Bernie Sanders for all these people, Bernie supporters who are going out and uh, tearing up stuff. And now we see this Bernie's wrecking crew. And it says a group of rabble rousing Bernie Sanders supporters from New York is headed to the Democratic National Convention next month, threatening to make trouble for Mrs. Clinton. Some 20,000 protesters are reportedly planning anti-Clinton protests outside the convention hall. Now, do everybody think it's cool and it's awesome and it's justified and, and you're self-righteous when you go beat up on Trump people and you throw uh, stuff at cops who are guarding Trump? When they come and beat up Mrs. Clinton's people, I want to hear all you people saying the same thing. Well, well, they don't like Mrs. Clinton, so it's okay for them to go and beat people up. And of course, I don't believe that. I don't blame Bernie Sanders for these stupid people going out and lighting trash can fires, just like I don't blame Donald Trump for some guy shoving somebody in, in the corner of some convention center. But if you're going to have that standard, you need to apply it across the board 
flat out with no uh, deviations as appears to your uh, sensibilities of that week. Uh, people need to hold themselves responsible. And honestly, I'm surprised the police have been as uh, reserved as they have been. Like we went on to Albuquerque, they were beating up on the horse. I'm like, you guys are lucky that horse didn't trample you to death, regardless if you had a cop uh, guarding him or not. And that's just some of the things that are going on around the country. And hopefully it will get better before it gets worse. Now, something that's getting worse here in the state of Texas is the flooding. And we also see another tragedy at Fort Hood. You guys know that uh, Fort Hood has had some very unfortunate shootings. And now we see that uh, multiple soldiers have died over the week uh, during uh, training exercises and some are missing. A half, uh, excuse me, two and a half ton truck flipped over during the flood water. So if there is flooding in your town, be sure to avoid that the best you can. Also, south of the border, we see things going on in Mexico with drug cartels taking over Acapulco. And it's a very strategic area. It's right on the water so people can get in and out of kind of run long on time. So you can read that at your leisure. And finally, tonight we have people coming over the border. And this is the issue when I talk about border security. I talk about this all the time. I have no issue with people who come here the legal lawful way. But in this report, the Afghan national with ties to the Taliban actually crawled under the border fence. This is why you need border security. So stay tuned after this break. We have many more special reports coming up right here on the InfoWars Nightly News. We're live broadcasting worldwide. And we have a special guest in studio. I mean, I knew who this guy was years ago. Ran into him at some JFK events. Uh, but I tell you, in the last year, getting to know Roger Stone, it's it's been amazing. He's the consummate Trump insider. He's a best-selling author. He's worked in nine administrations or for, on nine campaigns. I guess in like four administrations, correct me if I'm wrong. And, of course, famously good buddies with Richard Nixon. And I tell you, you look at Richard Nixon, where are the good old days? That guy's so-called corruption was like child's play. Uh, and I'm not defending it, obviously. You've written a book that's somewhat critical of him, but also positive. He was a real guy. Uh, what is the difference, Roger Stone, between a Richard Nixon and, say, a Hillary or Bill Clinton or an Obama? Because you've got a bunch of breaking news, a bunch of inside stuff. We've got a ton of anti-Trump rioters beating up women, uh, hitting them over the head with Mexican flags, and the mayor defending it is wonderful. I mean, these people seem like the real brown shirt fascists to me. I want to cover that today with you and, and, and all the points you want to get to. But first off, let's quantify your 40-something years in politics and your business partner, you, you know, being one of the top uh, folks right now, uh, heading up the Trump campaign a year ago or so. You were the head of the Trump campaign. Now you're out there on your own to defend the republic. Uh, but 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 so much. Where are we as a culture, as a society, and how would you parallel it between a Richard Milhouse Nixon and a Hillary Rodham Clinton? What type of individuals are these? I mean, was was Nixon a sociopath or a psychopath? We know Hillary is. Well, put it this way: Hillary and Bill Clinton make Richard Nixon look like Saint Thomas Aquinas. I mean, the unconstitutional uh, abuses of power by both the Clintons. Uh, and the Obamas pale in comparison to anything Richard Nixon did. Let's take a simple example. Uh, one of the counts of impeachment against Richard Nixon was, uh, was that he misused the IRS. Really, Kathleen Willey, Juanita Broderick, Paula Jones, they all got IRS audits. All the women sexually assaulted by Bill Clinton got IRS audits. Uh, but there was never an article of impeachment on the Clintons. The extra constitutional uh, 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 ravings and orders of Barack Obama uh, pale in comparison in anything Richard Nixon did. Uh, it shows that there's a diff there's a double standard between conservative Republicans and liberal Democrats. Republicans are held to a higher standard. And it seems to be getting worse. Uh, I know you flew in last night, but you've seen some of the news today. We covered it last hour. You have left-wing editors of newspapers. You have the mayor out there in the town where this just happened, where Breitbart and, and of course, our own reporters are there having events, and they're coming in and beating up women now on TV, waving Mexican flags in San Jose, and the media is saying this is a good thing. Now, this is unprecedented. Yeah, I actually think, uh, and Pat Buchanan wrote this last week very eloquently, all these demonstrations, all this violence is only going to redound to the benefit of Donald Trump. Uh, the lines are drawn in America between the producers and the takers. Uh, and the more they foment violence, and let's be very clear, 
This violence is agate prop. It's paid for. It's orchestrated. It, it's a faux demonstration. These are hardline professional agitators financed by George Soros, MoveOn.org, Black Lives Matter, David Brock and the and the and the freaks at uh, at Media Matters for America. Then go out and interpret it, blaming all of the violence on Trump. Hardworking blue collar Americans see this violence. And they repair to the Trump banner. In my view, the entire thing will backfire. I agree. And it's on record in Europe, the tactics, bully and attack, and then shut down conservatives or patriot speech, nationalist speech. It's the same mode here. It's the same leftist blueprint with big corporations that want monopolies funding it. But it is backfiring all over the world. So then I ask, what is George Soros and Hillary Clinton, what are they thinking? I think it's just a, it's a miscalculation. Here's what they're trying to do. There is a morbid fear on the left that many of the Bernie Sanders voters uh, are going to wise up to the fact that the internationalist globalist trade deals like NAFTA have destroyed the job market in the United States and that the neocon policies of both the Clintons and the Bushes have driven us all off to, to endless uh, and pointless war. They're deathly afraid that one third, not the hard left, but one third of the Sanders voters will become available to Trump. And therefore, these these riots, these these attacks, he's a racist, he's a bigot, he's a maniac, he's mentally unbalanced. That is meant to disqualify Trump among those voters. They are desperate to disqualify them because they are. They're outsiders. These folks are natural Trump voters. We have common economic interests with them, and that is what they fear. He's in a dead heat or a few points ahead in most polls. You're the expert on that. Correct me if I'm wrong. Where is the state of the battle? What's the path to victory, A? But but B, clearly, uh, I don't need to be a political scientist to know that most people uh, out there you know, feel intimidated because they don't want to be called racist. But secretly, they're planning to vote for Trump because they're nationalists, they're patriots. And I'm talking about black voters, Hispanics, and others, because I'm suddenly seeing double, triple the numbers of Hispanics and, and, and African-American folks at the Trump rallies because we have the live feeds. Our crew is at almost all of these. Infowars.com is covering it. And I'm not seeing that on the news now. They're not doing close-up shots of the lines anymore because it's freaking the media out. And now suddenly, in multiple speeches, when Obama talks about Trump, he turns into a blithering idiot, and, and I think he, he's got him and the people have him completely rattled right now. Yeah, I think what's happening here is that the the uh, you have a well-oiled political machine run by the Clintons, uh, and it is uh, it is extremely well funded. Just the super PACs supporting Hillary have raised eighty five million and have another forty eight million dollars on hand. Uh, Compare that with the Trump organization and the Trump campaign. This is an entirely indigenous, grassroots, guerrilla campaign. Trump has managed to get nominated without polling, without sophisticated analytics and targeting, uh, without uh, massive hundreds of millions of dollars worth of both positive and negative TV commercials. This is, it's an uprising. It's a citizen insurgency, uh, and it's going to take on the best oiled, best funded political operation probably in American history. Uh, an operation that was, has been very successful at controlling the narrative because of their close associates uh, association uh, and their simpatico views with the mainstream media. Uh, Trump is, be able, is able, because he's going to be the nominee, to break through all of that. So uh, would Marco Rubio or Chris Christie or, or any of these other candidates Called Hillary Clinton a crook? No, only Donald Trump has the cojones to do that. In fact, we've got that queued up. Uh, I've already, I don't normally play a clip five or six times during a broadcast, but Trump, the clip's up on Infowars.com. Uh, Steve Watson wrote an article about it. Spread this out to everybody. Hillary Clinton has to go to jail. She's guilty as hell. By the way, Hillary Clinton is missing 30,000 emails. They've been deleted. 30,000. 30,000 emails. And remember I said I was a counterpuncher? I am. After what she said about me today in her phony speech, that was a phony speech. That was a Donald Trump pitch up. I will say this, 
Hillary Clinton has to go to jail, okay? She has to go to jail. To go. <laughs> I'm going to play more of it. This is unprecedented modern intro. politics. This is the end of an era, folks. This is, She's even guilty if Trump as hell. Win, this brings him down. Remember, Hillary Clinton used to hate Obama. She used to hate him. Bill Clinton hated him. Bill Clinton hated him. He called Bill Clinton a racist. Do you remember that? Bill Clinton hated him. All right. And Hillary Clinton hated Obama. Now it's, yes, sir, Mr. President, <laughs> sir. Yes, sir. What would you like? What would you like me to say here, sir? The only reason she's behaving like this and the only reason she's been dragged so far left, believe me, is she doesn't want to go to jail over the emails, okay? Believe me. That's, that's the it. only reason. 30,000 of them. One simple reason. That's good. Uh, I mean, this is coffin nails. Uh, this is unprecedented. And, and uh, look, my gut told me Trump was good over a year ago. That's why I've been supporting him. But now I'm so proud I'm supporting him because I can tell he is for real. He has gotten so serious. It's not even a joke now. And the numbers are going up. You've known this guy for 40 plus years. You don't talk about your private you know, relationship with him, but you've been his wingman. You name it when he's not married. You know, you're buddies. You know, not just been in business together. Um, they're saying on Bill Maher that he's dumbing it down for the public. Have you ever wondered why feminists and social justice warriors behave like escaped mental patients? Oh, no. oh we should oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Why are they so loud and obnoxious? You're a white male! Despite looking like the cast from a pilot show called The Unbubbles, why are they always trying to be the center of attention? <laughs> Turns out it might be because mommy didn't give them enough huggles. As Laura Perrins explains, we're talking about the daycare generation. <coughs> These kids grew up in the 90s when feminists assured us that nursery care was completely healthy. Turns out that was bull****. A 2001 National Institute of Child Health and Development study revealed a link between long hours of non-maternal care for young children and aggressive behavior. <laughs> In other words, you had two dozen insecure screaming brats all competing for the attention of one stressed out daycare worker. The love and protection of mother's safe space was nowhere to be seen. And the only way to be heard was to throw a massive tantrum. So SJWs are craving the comfort and security of home that they never had growing up. It is not about creating an intellectual space. It is not. Do you understand that? It's about creating a home here. They're addicted to being treated like special snowflakes because mommy didn't shower them with enough love. They're obsessed with making crazy demands to grab the attention that they were denied in daycare. Richard, step down. So there you have it. Psychologically speaking, social justice warriors are mentally stunted toddlers who throw fits when they don't get their own way because they never learned to interact like normal humans. They're so full of righteous indignation because they're inflicting revenge on the world for their emotionally deprived childhoods. Stop talking to us like children! And even though they're adolescent crybabies, scared of Halloween costumes and other people's opinions, let's take the high road. Let's be compassionate. Let's be kind. Hug a social justice warrior today. Actually, f that. Let's just keep triggering the little s**ts. It's hilarious! <laughs> Most people are aware that the Ku Klux Klan is a white power organization. Some are even aware of the fact that the KKK was created by the Democratic Party. Even fewer are aware of the Klan's foothold in Washington, D.C. Some people are aware of the new Black Panther Party. But are they aware of its true purpose? 
And most people don't bat an eye when they hear the respectful allowance of La Raza to enter the U.S. political landscape. Be it known by this presence that I, Carl Guasso, Mayor of the City of Austin, Texas, do hereby proclaim October 12th as Dia de la Raza, Day of the Race. But most people have no idea what La Raza really is or where it came from. Recently, an exhibit at the Bob Bullock Museum in Austin, Texas glorified the explosive event that took place in the small Texas town of San Diego in 1915, when a Spanish document appeared calling for Chicanos, African Americans, Native Americans, and Japanese immigrants to start a race war at 2 a.m. on February the 20th, 1915. The document also called for the execution of all adult white males over the age of 16 and the recapturing of Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, California, and Colorado from the United States government. In July of 1915, bands of Mexican revolutionaries entered the Rio Grande Valley. These guerrilla forces disrupted transportation and killed several Anglo-Americans. One of these sporadic raids led by Pancho Villa caused General John Pershing to enter northern Mexico in pursuit. The escalating tensions were finally brought to a standstill when Mexican and U.S. officials agreed to a peaceful settlement. Ancient history, right? Wrong. At the forefront of the revolutionary movement is the Raza. When you go to Venezuela... You can't stop us. There's too many of us. We're ready. We're, we're breeding by the day. Back to Europe! This is America! Look, you color! You white! You don't belong here! This used to be Mexico, you know what I mean? And the people that were here before, they're, they're just not going to get up and leave. Mexico! 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 Arriba Mexico! You think we have kids because we like sex? No, we're having kids ready to start this war. Believe me, I got another one on the way. and She'll be strapped up, ready for you. Come get it. Come get it. Come knock on my door and see what happens. We're ready. We're ready. In fact, a secondary plan of San Diego called for the establishment of a Republic of Texas made up of Texas, New Mexico, California, Arizona, Mississippi, and Oklahoma. San Antonio, Texas would be the place where the revolutionary leadership would be based. So when Donald Trump's university is being scrutinized by a member of the La Raza Lawyers of San Diego, it should now make sense why this is a clear indication that the body politic has been infiltrated. The Daily Caller reports, United States District Court Judge Gonzalo Curiel, the man presiding over the class action lawsuit against Trump University, is a member of the La Raza Lawyers of San Diego and oversaw the gift of a law school scholarship to an illegal alien. In his 2011 judicial questionnaire to become a federal judge, Curiel revealed his history with La Raza. Why has racism been allowed to fester and rear its ugly head unchecked? While being displaced on a presidential candidate forcing American citizens to face the danger growing exponentially on our border, while the spirit of racism is used more as a social weapon than treated as a social ill. Simple, because it has power over the masses, and the bought and paid for media plays it for all it's worth. Racism gets the common people nowhere, a nowhere the corporocratic New World Order wants all of its subjects to dwell in. We need unity among black, white, brown, red, and yellow, everyday, ordinary people. So I'm throwing some questions out there. The original Black Panther Party formed in October of 1966, of which I was a member, believed in all power to the people. Black, white, brown, red, and yellow people. All right, all of us. Because we understood and we understand today that this struggle is about all of us. You know, resistance is not futile. It is essential to our life and our liberty. We have record immigration, illegal immigration in the history of the world. In the history of the world. We cannot assimilate this many people. And the government is teaching them to be balkanized, whether you're from Russia or China or Mexico, to control us. It's divide and conquer, and it finally John Bound for Infowars.com.
Unfortunately, you've grown up hearing voices that incessantly warn of government as nothing more than some separate sinister entity that's at the root of all our problems. It's time to stop submitting to this tyranny. It's time to realize that we're being enslaved. Some of these same vo voices also do their best to gum up the works. They'll warn that tyranny is always lurking just around the corner. Tyranny with a capital T. You should reject these voices. Everything that's been done with torture, rendition, the NDAA, the Patriot Acts 1 and 2, from day one was focused on the American people, period. That's it. It's always been about erasing the Bill of Rights and Constitution and rolling out NSA spying publicly, saying it's for Al-Qaeda, rolling out torture, saying it's for Al-Qaeda, but it's really for the general public, rolling out total control and the end of any underground free market systems in the name of fighting Al-Qaeda, but really shutting down any type of free commerce. This is all about converting us from a free society to a tyranny with a capital T. The corporocratic Borg wants us all replaced. And by ordering that Big Mac and fries from a robot rather than a human being, we are guaranteeing that sooner than later, the United States will be under complete multinational corporate control. Gone are the days of your teenage daughter earning extra money as a babysitter. That will be replaced by a machine. Cashiers will be replaced. Bank tellers replaced. Surgeons replaced. Factory jobs replaced. Taxi drivers replaced. Pharmacists replaced. Lawyers and paralegals replaced. Even reporters replaced. And the list goes on and on. Eventually, the 90% of the human population the eugenicists want wiped off of the face of the earth will be contained under a neo-feudal corporate system until the day comes for the globalists to exterminate humanity on a level never before seen in human history. And then I see all the Bill and Melinda Gates, Monsanto preparation, like chickens with their heads cut off the last two years on Ebola and Ebola vaccines that are really live virus, nanotech, super science stuff from eugenicists that run Planned Parenthood and, and fund all the big gun control groups and openly say they want to break up the family. Hardcore psychopath, exterminist, beyond anything you'll ever see in a movie or read in a book. They make Hitler look unsophisticated. The warning signs are all around you. Cash is being phased out and digitized into a Borg system masquerading as convenience. It's not gold. Gold is not a 6,000-year-old bubble. The petrodollar, now that's a bubble. That's a bubble that supports the entire American economy. When that bubble bursts, you're going to have massive economic consequences. And that's why they're training for martial law. So, you know, that would be a downside of abolishing currency because that would, that would kind of upset people. Yeah, I think it would because they would understand what's behind that. He says... Currency use remains high among the poor and older people. So he suggests to keep low denomination cash in circulation, nothing higher than a $5 bill, he says. That might solve the problem. And so he goes through a whole, whole bunch of different scenarios. He's got about five of them here, but he dismisses each of these things in turn, they say in the article. Uh, this is Zero Hedge. He says, in summary, we therefore conclude that the arguments against abolishing currency are rather weak. And the new job numbers are dismal. Market Watch reports the U.S. created just 38,000 new jobs in May and hiring in the prior two months was weaker than originally reported, casting doubt on whether the Federal Reserve will raise interest rates later in June. The number of new jobs was the smallest the economy has created since the fall of 2010. And CNS reports when President Obama took office in January 2009, 80,529,000 Americans were not participating in the labor force. Since then, 14,179,000 Americans have left the workforce. 
some of them retiring, and some just quitting because they can't find work. Corporate leeches are bringing down their host for a reason. Robots don't earn money, and robots don't pay taxes. What better way to bring in a new world order by introducing a crippling welfare-based economy? So when buying that Happy Meal from your new robot friend and laughing at the poor schlub that lost their job to that robot, remember, that may be the last Happy Meal you ever eat, human. John Bound for InfoWars.com EU proposes government ID to use the internet. Done, done, done. Infowars.com, prisonplanet.com. And here is the document. European Commission, COM 2016, 288, forward slash two. Communication from the commission. And by the way, the unelected commission does the laws. The parliament is ceremonial and advisory. <laughs> uh, wow, this is a dictatorship. The commission has spoken. A self-appointed commission that commands through the barrel of a 7.6239 round. And you ask, why are they doing it now? Because they're getting ready to implode the economy and launch big wars and try to start race wars and sectarian wars. I mean, they have got a blueprint. I mean, you can feel it in your gut. But I've gone from, in my spider sense, my sixth sense, my discernment, my spirit, from being, oh, get ready, God, to like now just feeling energized because now I can tell the it's on, folks. Any, it's all, and, 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 and any fears that I was ever misleading anybody and was ever exaggerating and just peeled back and my confidence has spiked even more because unfortunately I know we are in an epic battle because when they shut down the free speech, they're coming for everything and these people are bloodthirsty. Look what they do to Christians everywhere they're in control. Uh, Kit Daniels, InfoWars.com report. Uh, I want to say good job getting this out there. I know this just came out like a day ago, but I mean, where is this? Well, I mean, I don't want to be the one ringing the alarm most of the time up front. That is not a good feeling, you know, uh, to use a Vietnam analogy where they just say for, you know, year after year, you're going to walk in the front every day. I'm like, hey, how about somebody else? Oh, good. Somebody else wants to be in the front today. It's not that I'm a coward. It's just doesn't seem like good luck. Kit Daniels. Uh, this is exactly it. This is neo-feudalism. This is a way to tax and control the internet. They don't want Matt Drudge with influence, you know, giving this spreading ideas of liberty on the internet. They don't want Alex. Federal Green. Elections Commission came exactly. out and said go after Drudge last week. See, they're all at exactly. They want to turn the internet back into what television was like in the 1960s, where they only had a handful of stations and they controlled everything. And I've not even stated, so I'm mad at myself, kid. I haven't even stated how big this is, and I've always said this forever. When they come out with the internet ID, that's to restrict you, to rate you, to ban you, to track you, to tax you. Abs this is the end of the internet as we know. I mean, think about it this way. Facebook and Twitter is already one third of the internet. Where's all the internet traffic's going? It's going straight to Facebook. That's just like a TV station in the 1960s that they control, where they can control the narrative. They can control what's spread. They use PC suppression to... Uh, to exactly. You know, to destroy any competition to the government. They're narrative. carving up the web now. Go over your article. I mean, you've got the subsections. This is devastatingly evil. Yeah. One thing I, I've, I brought to that really bothered me about this uh, document is the fact that they're using that says the proliferation of online video sharing platforms, the content that is harmful to minors and of hate speech. Yeah, but like they're going to mix soft porn, but they're going to leave all the big Viacom and Sony oh, yeah. women shaking their rear ends. You know, and, and, and bikinis, that's okay, but absolutely, they're going to mix political speech in with porn and ban us, they admit it. Yeah, but like I said on Monday, the EU is the ones that are deciding what is hate speech, and to them, hate speech is just anything that... An unelected contrary. group yeah. of admitted communists and socialists working for above-the-law megabanks. Yeah, anything that runs contrary to their agenda is hate speech to them. You're not allowed to criticize the migrants raping women or they come arrest you. Yeah. Or even if you want to spread, say, Austrian economics online, that's hate speech to them. They, Drudge is right. They first are putting us into internet ghettos. Mm -hmm. And then after you're in a ghetto and dehumanized and made poor and everybody forgets about you and segregated, then you're moved to the electronic concentration camp. So now they're moving to the, I'm not kidding, folks. I mean, we're in a mayday emergency situation. Yeah, on Monday, I believe, when I saw this article on Drudge, when I woke up in the morning, this Bloomberg article... It, but what really bothered me about it was how bad they downplayed it. Oh, they sell it like yeah. exactly. It's real. Oh, we're going to, 
you know, anything cultural, racial, or religious, we're sorry. You're just going to be banned. Sorry. And it's like, oh, yeah, well, we're going to just make more censorship. You know, and all, all the tech companies all just announced in the last 24 hours they're going to sign an agreement with the EU to let them direct. Oh, and Facebook already beta tested hiring former Stasi commanders. <gasps> oh, oh. It's all seamless integration. They're merging the tech giants with the global government. The Asia Pacific mm -hmm. Union through the TPP merges the Atlantic Union, which is the NAU, North American Union, and the European Union. They are merging the three super states with the 10 sub regions now, with 10 sub regions per region directly out of revelations. Yeah, what's really bizarre to me is the one world government they're pushing is an electronic super state. I mean, think about this way. You said this on the broadcast a couple of weeks ago about how Facebook is transforming our culture. You no longer see national identities or culture because everyone's going on Facebook. So now you have what they call a global culture. <sighs> Folks, I cannot put a bad enough face on this, but we need a bad face on it to wake up to it, to overthrow the facade in our own minds and realize we are being overtaken by a group of psychopaths that are building an artificial reality to insert us into it so that we're anesthetized and culturally numbed when we're put through the shredder. And it's going to be done incrementally. But the final group will be the elites not controlled by the globalists. And you will wish later you would have joined me in the fight against these people. You've got the know-how, the capacity, you know I'm telling the truth, but you don't have enough faith in humanity to make a stand. Well, that's it for our show tonight. I'm Jakari Jackson from the InfoWars Command Center, and we'll see you again next week. You talk about leveling with the American people. Have you always told the truth? I've always tried to. You know, is she in it for us or is she in it for herself? What difference at this point does it make? Donald Trump has already sealed the deal for the Republican nomination. But will Bernie's wrecking crew be out in full force to tear the roof off when Clinton's camp steals California? You know... Oh, excuse me, I'm talking. Let him run. Join me and the rest of the InfoWars crew this Tuesday, June 7th at 7 p.m. We're going to be going live to document Hillary's last stand. I don't feel no ways tired. I come too far. So you ask my opinion, I will tell you my opinion. I'm not going to be channeling my husband. Join us live this Super Tuesday at 7 p.m. Central for the InfoWars Nightly News.